For the first time as Big 12 Conference mates, we will see BYU and West Virginia face each other this coming Saturday, November the 4th at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 5 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time on FS1. The game will take place in Morgantown, West Virginia, inside Milan Pushkar Stadium. I'm going to bring a guest on, and we're going to go over some key matchups, some key players to watch for in this game. And we're going to do that right after this word from my sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up, college sports fans, Big 12 fans, and fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into another edition of Kuzma's Corner. Belly yourself up to the bar, grab a chair, and let me serve you up this shot of top shelf college football content. Today, I'm going to have a guest to help me serve up this top shelf content, and his name, and you, a lot of you may know him, Nathan Bomber Brown from Big 12 Mafia. Nathan, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, Justin. How are you doing? Doing great, man. I really appreciate you coming on and, uh, you know, doing this game preview with me. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here, and I've been waiting all year for this game. You and I talked about this game, I think it was in April or May. Yeah, yeah, and, months ago. Uh, we were looking forward to it, yep. Absolutely, man. It's uh, like, like you and I were talking off air, it's always cool to see – different opponents on the schedule. I mean, you guys may be used to that, you know, where you guys were independent for so long, but right. you know, for us, we've been playing basically the same, you when, you, when you're in conference, you play basically the same teams over and over again. So it's always cool to see new teams on the schedule. And uh, sure. I'm looking forward to this one. I mean, they have played before, but it was several years ago and it wasn't as members of the same conference. So it's, right. this one's got a little bit more meaning to it. You know, it means, it means a little more to me. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah. It's going to yeah. make a big difference, especially the conference is still up in the air, you know? Absolutely. I mean? Yep. You've got two teams, uh, both five and three overall. I mean, what's BYU's conference record right now? One and two, right? Or two and two. Yeah. Two and two. Yeah. Yeah. And West Virginia is right now sitting at uh, uh, three and two. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh should be a good game. Um, let's dig right in, man. Well, first off, before we do that, let, uh, let everybody know where they can find you and your work. Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm on YouTube uh, and also on Twitter, uh, Big 12 Mafia. You can put that into YouTube and my show will show up. And also, will the Holy Rivals show that I have with Wild Ute. Uh, we're doing that for the Holy War between BYU and Utah. So both you can find on YouTube, just either the Holy the Holy Rivals or uh, Big 12 Mafia. Awesome. Thank you for that, man. Uh, and and yeah. everybody, go, go check his show out. I mean, he's, his gr show is growing like crazy. He has some really cool guests on. He's had Bob Thompson on. Uh, he has some really good contributors over there. Uh, some friends of my show, Immaculate. I've had Immaculate on a couple of times. Right. Uh, obviously, Wild Ute has been on on my show, along with my Hoops from the Hill show. So, uh, so yeah. Um, and Moen. Can't forget about Moen. Yeah, right. Moen's fantastic. Yes. Never know what he's going to look like. So You don't know what he looks like or what he's going to say on a day-to-day. -day. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Let's dig into this game. First okay. of all, uh, Looking at when I look at BYU, a couple things stand out to me: some positives, some negatives. One of the things that stand out, and we'll start with BYU's offense versus West Virginia's defense. BYU seems to be struggling to run the football. Yes. Uh, what is what's going on there, in your opinion? Uh, the offensive line has underperformed. We brought in a guy at uh, Etienne from West Virginia mm -hmm. who's ended up being their worst lineman this year, which is remarkable. The guy's a mountain of a man, but he's got the lowest rating for both pass defense and and run uh, run blocking. So they've struggled. In fact, I've, I've thought about it for a long time, and I think our biggest challenge right now is Keaton Slovis not getting enough time from the offense, you know, offensive line blocking. And um, the running game has suffered because of it. And without those two things, their defense is fantastic, but offense has struggled. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I noticed they're only averaging about 80, 81 yards per rushing. Yeah. Uh, rushing yards a game. So that's, uh, you know, that, that could be troublesome if that holds true. Now, and you talked about Slovis. Uh, right. 
first of all, let's let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. West Virginia fans do not like Keaton Slovis. Yeah, I've heard that. I didn't know that before, but yeah, yes. I've heard that. Uh, I don't know if you know the story, but last year, for those who may not know it, he was a quarterback at Pitt last year, right? Okay. We played them in the backyard brawl, first game of the season. They were having some kind of pep rally event before the game at Pitt, and he, he gets on a microphone, and this is all being videoed. He gets on, on a microphone and stands up and says, F West Virginia, right? Really? Of course, of course, gets all the pit crowd going crazy, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, ever since then, West Virginia fans have, have not liked him, right? Right. Uh, I think rightfully so. I wouldn't like that either. And, uh, of course, now they're, they're, that video is now resurfaced, thanks sure. to West Virginia fans, uh, making it resurface and kind of saying, hey, you know, what do your Mormon, Mormon, Mormon brothers think about this, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, and, and I I don't like that. I I wouldn't like to hear that from one of my right. players. So I'm sure you would. I, I think he probably probably uh, right now he's probably regretting that he did that. Yeah, but but most importantly, they're just saying, hey, you know, use it use it as bulletin board material. Oh sure. To, to try to get revenge because you know hit Pitt and him him and Pitt beat us last year. So right. Uh, maybe that's something they can use to get motivated. But um, but 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 as far as his performance goes, has he lived up to the expectations that BYU fans had for him? Um, I think when he gets time, he's been precise. He, we've had yeah. some fantastic offense uh, through the air this year. Yeah. Uh, but if he is rushed at all, and I mean gets any pressure up on him, uh, he struggles. He's thrown some picks that you're like, why don't you just throw that out of bounds or even mm -hmm. eat it and take a sack? Anything's yeah. better than throwing a pit, pick six, which I think he's thrown two of those. So that, that's never a good thing. Right. And West Virginia will dial up. They don't blitz. You know, I'm not. There are teams out there that blitz more than West Virginia, but they do pick their moments and their spots. Oh yeah, and you know, West Virginia's yeah. defense has been fantastic. I think. And in games, in games where they have been able to get pressure on quarterbacks, they've caused a lot of problems. Yes. Uh, we had we forced four turnovers last week against UCF. We had three turn. I think we forced three against Pitt. Now Pitt's offense is is terrible. Okay, mm -hmm. let's be honest. But UCF's offense is not. Now, and UCF was able to move the ball on, on West Virginia. Right. But those turnovers, man, uh, John Rice Plumley also has a tendency to throw picks when he's pressured. Yes. And yes. he did that last week. And he also fumbled it once uh, on, on a strip sack. So, mm -hmm. if if West Virginia can get home on some pressure, uh, I, I feel really good about our defense in this game. But, like you mentioned, if he has time, I, I feel like our DBs – our, our, our DBs are good, but they're not going to be able to cover anybody for more than, you know, two, three seconds. Right. Uh, so you've got guys over there named Darius Lasseter, number one. Guys right. like a highlight, a walking highlight reel. He is. He is fantastic receiver, yeah. yeah. And then you've got uh, Chase Roberts, who's your actually leading receiver on yep. the team. Those two guys scare the bejeebies out of me because they're both really good. Uh, yes. what, do you, what, what would you like to say about those guys? I love them for one thing. I knew that our receivers were going to be good this year and mm -hmm. all Keaton needs to do is get on the ball. Uh, they'll put their feet down anywhere. Literally I'm talking a postage stamp. They can uh, get on the field to count it as a catch. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, it comes down to the time that Keaton's having to throw the ball. Um, and when he's throwing it off the mark, he has not shown a, a tendency to be able to adapt and get around those things. He's gotcha. done some really savvy things. Uh, again, in the Cincinnati game, there was one rush where a guy came right up the middle, middle three, and he basically didn't no lay and let him run right by him. That was, you know, that was a pro savvy move, but then he, you know, he starts to feel pressure. And so he just throws the ball up in the air off his back foot. Yeah. Like he did against Texas. And it's just, come on, you can't do that. Right. Now, your running game, you're, you have a freshman running back. Uh, is, yes. is, is it just a matter of him not, not getting enough holes to run through? Is he struggling? What What's the deal there? I think LJ Martin is hurt. Uh, uh, he got hurt to, in the Texas Tech game. I'm not okay. sure if he's going to play this week or not. Gotcha. I haven't looked at the injury reports yet. But Aiden Robbins is now yes. back healthy. Okay. And he's a beast. He's, yeah. he's 250. And uh, he knows how to put put his feet on the ground. Okay. So yeah. it, it, it's going to take two or three guys to bring him down if he's in the open field. Yeah, and that that you know that's a little worrisome because our you know West Virginia for whatever reason the last three weeks have not tackled. Now they did okay against UCF; it was better. But the Houston game and then uh, the second half against Oklahoma State, we could not tackle. It was terrible. Of course, 
Ollie Gordon had a lot to do with that. Ollie Gordon's uh, fantastic. Oh my he? gosh, man! Yes. But 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 that being said, our guys did not tackle well. Now, like I said, they did better last week, especially mm-hmm. in the second half against UCF, and they've got some pretty good backs of their own. But they don't have anybody as big, I don't think, uh, as an Aiden Robbins. So that does scare me a little bit. Right. Um. You know, will he be able to to break some tackles and get upfield? Uh, I think he can. He has mm-hmm. the potential to do that. That's why they brought him in. It's yeah. just a matter of, the, you know, is this offensive line going to be able to hold up? I'm really scared about West Virginia's defensive line. Yeah. Their yeah. front is stout, and uh, BYU has shown some tendencies to be leaky at points. So uh, either the game's going to be extremely close and BYU's line holds up, or you guys, there's, you got, you're going to get home three or four or five times and – uh, Keaton's going to turn the ball over and you guys will blow us out. That's kind of, really? it's either going to be a, a, a really close game or I think West Virginia runs away with it. Wow. Interesting. And, yeah. and if it's obviously, if it's close, you think that favors BYU. I do just because yeah. that would mean that they've been able to control the clock a little better. Mm-hmm. And the offense has been able to, you know, put some runs where they go 12, 13, 14 type plays in a run and right. a drive. So, uh, Again, I, the score I have been saying is like 27-24, something like that, or West Virginia wins 38-21. Uh, I, I, right. I don't think – I think West Virginia has the potential to run away with it. Gotcha. Um, our defensive line, you talked about our defensive line. One of the – for any BYU fans who might be listening here, just to kind of give them an idea, we rotate 10 or 11 guys on our defensive line. Uh, wow. on a regular basis and that's i mean i've not seen that in that's that i can ever remember and and we and you don't see much of a drop off i mean right. the guy who uh, he was leading the team in sacks i think he still is tommy wadder who's a true who's a retro freshman transfer from kentucky he's he's not even a starter i mean oh wow uh we've got really really good depth at that spot which helps because they can they don't get tired yeah. the problem is uh, we have very little depth at the linebacker spot and in the secondary because of injuries. Right, and I've uh, seen that as well. Yeah, and and, and well, injuries is a big part of it. I mean, yeah. uh, th- we also don't didn't have a whole lot of bodies at those positions anyway, uh, for for whatever reason. But uh, and then injuries has made it worse. We've got uh, one at least one guy out for the year at the linebacker spot. We have one guy in the secondary who's his status is unknown at this point. They don't know when he'll be back. We've had one guy get kicked off the team. It's just been. Oh, body's wow. going body's getting you know disappearing everywhere right uh but so far with the exception of a couple games guys have been able to step up and, and do what's needed to, needed what they needed to do to win um hopefully that can continue but i just worry you know we got guys playing we got a couple guys that are playing you know 90 90 to 100 percent of the snaps in every game so it's 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 a little bit tr- it's a little bit worrisome you know how yeah. long can those guys hold up you know It'll be interesting to see in the game when it, when they're playing live that it, whether they are able to apply pressure enough to take away the deficiencies, which uh, the weakness and the strength of BYU, uh, unfortunately for West Virginia, BYU's uh, their their receivers are fantastic. Uh, when Ro- Isaac Rex is the tight end can get open, yes. he can he can lope and he, they're all one hand catchers. Mm-hmm. They can all catch the ball with one hand and and run forever. So uh, it, that's the one area that BYU, I think, has an uh, opportunity to exploit. Mm-hmm. But, boy, I am extremely – I'm really, really scared about you guys' defensive line. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned him because I was going to ask you about him anyway. He, he Watching Tate, man, he's a, he's a, he's a horse. He's a stud. He is. I wish Aaron Roderick, the <laughs> offensive coordinator, would call more plays his yeah. way. Yeah, I think he's, on, he he's, got, he's, he's got about 12 passes, 12 yeah. receptions, I think. Yeah, it's on the not year. near what it should be. He yeah. should be in the 30s. Yeah. Uh, by now, or maybe even 40 catches. So that's a problem with, yeah. So that's a different show, Coos. <laughs> I hear you. All right. Now let's, let's flip sides of the ball real quick. Uh, okay. This, this is the part of the game that really makes me the most nervous. Okay. Uh, even though West Virginia's offense has played well the last three weeks, mm-hmm. um, this BYU defense, man, you guys are plus eight in turnover margin. Yes. And you've t- intercepted twelve passes this year. Yeah, that's right. So so far, Garrett Green has only thrown two interceptions, and one of those was not really his fault. Um, a guy dropped it, and it bounced right into the arms of a defender. But that being said, uh, I don't know that we've played a team as opportunistic with interceptions as you guys have. What is it with that defense? Is it is it 
because your defensive numbers aren't great. I mean, as far as right. your yards per game and all that. But man, that twelve interceptions scares me. So, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So the the one way to look at the stats for the defense is not so much in the yards that they've given up or even the points. Mm -hmm. It's the positions that the offense has put them in. They've great been point. so many turnovers. They've been in short fields. And then the Texas game was a great example. They were they could have easily kept the game 21-6 and finished it that way. Sarkeesian wasn't putting his foot on, on the gas for offense. He just wanted the game to end. But the defense had been beat down for four quarters. And you get to the end of the game, they're just tired. There's only so much you can ask from these guys. They've mm -hmm. been really, really good. And I think um, – Again, if it's like the Texas Tech or the Cincinnati game, we won the turnover margin and we got those sort of special plays, the 50-50 balls that may or may not normally be completed. And that's how they won those games. Uh, the, the flip side is, uh, Texas. you know, you go look at Texas or TCU and it's like, oh, my gosh, what do we got going on here? It almost looked like they were had never played together mm -hmm. at all. So uh, I it just – the nickname for people that don't know BYU vampires because they love playing at night. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem also comes to the vampires and they're kind of schizophrenic. You don't know what you're going to get from them all the time. I hear you. Yeah, that that I'm, I'm a little concerned. I, I look for I look for Garrett to probably throw at least one pick in this game just because of the like I said the uh, right the, the defense of BYU is so good at taking taking the ball away. I mean, you've got one guy with four interceptions. Yes. You've got two guys with three interceptions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. The Jay Hill, look, at the end of the day, BYU would be getting blown out in most of these games if Jay Hill didn't come in and rebuild the defense. Uh, the defense is, uh, I think in two years, the BYU defense might be the strong point of the team if Jay Hill sticks around. I'm not sure mm -hmm. that is a fact either. He might be a head coach next year or something. Mm -hmm. But bottom line is, BYU's defense is well uh, improved from the last several years. And if they get a chance to stay in the game with uh, even a 60-40 play uh, uh, difference, uh, where 60% of those plays are, are uh, of all the plays called are actually West Virginia plays, uh, I think BYU's defense will hold up. Speaking of your defense, what mm -hmm. what does your def what does BYU's defensive line look like? It's kind of a hodgepodge. We've had some injuries. We lost some guys to the transfer portal that really would have helped us. They went to Utah and have helped Utah be strong. Mm -hmm. So it, that's been one of the areas that I think that they've shown a lot of improvement, but you know, not, there's one, not one guy that Tyler Batty is the guy that's the anchor. He's been there forever. He has, I, I don't know, maybe five or six sacks, very, very agile. He could be playing on Sundays next year, but he's one guy. Uh, there, uh, uh, Sarah is a four star that came in this year that has been fantastic on the defensive line, but that's two guys, right? We need eight guys. We need mm -hmm. nine guys. And that's just something that's going to take a while for BYU to get to that P five, you know, recruiting level that they yeah. say takes two or three or four years. What about your linebackers? Uh, well, we lost Ben Bywater, shoulder injury. He he mm -hmm. was the guy that was a returning vet. Yeah. Um, it, it, everybody else is, you know, they're strong. I, I wouldn't say the linebackers, it's certainly not the defensive backs, are the weak part of this defense. It, it's going to be that defensive line and just the lack of depth. Well, that that bodes well for West Virginia, in my opinion, because the strength of our team is likely our offensive line. Right, right. So, and I think it's going to be yeah. settled in the trenches. This game is not going to end up being some fluke that happens because you get a random interception. Either the, your offense and defensive lines control the game or BYU is able to, to basically stay 50%. Yeah. If they can stay in the game and, and keep Slovis up, and on the defense side, stop from the linebackers and defensive backs doing all the tackling. Yeah. I think this game will be a, a lot closer. Yeah, yeah. We we do we do have our starting right tackle Ben uh Ben I about said Ben Doug Nestor, who's okay. going to be out for this game. He got injured against UCF in the first half, and he'll be out again. But the guy who's going to be replacing him, uh, Nick Malone, has played over two hundred snaps this year. So he's oh wow, he's very experienced. Between he, he's he's like a He's like an emergency tight end. Plus, he's our backup tackle. And okay, we've had, uh, you know, he had to play for Wyatt Milam some a few weeks ago. He missed a couple games, so Malone had to fill in for him. So he he's played a lot of football. Um, and the and they they don't feel a bit uncomfortable with him in the game. He's not, obviously he's not as good as Nestor, or he'd be starting right. 
but but they're but the playbook is still the whole playbook is still at their disposal with him in the game. Right. He's it's not to the point where they have to change the playbook. And fortunately, Nestor is the right tackle. West Virginia has most of their success running up to the left side. So, you know, I, I don't know how good the right side of your defense. Uh, you know, I don't know if you have a stronger side, right side or left side as far as your defensive front. But uh, I West don't v- think so. Tyler Batty, whichever side he plays on both sides. So I wouldn't okay. say that he would be on the right or the left. <laughs> gotcha. But he doesn't. I know he doesn't play like defensive tackle. So he's not right. in the middle. They move. Him, they move him around. They do. Yeah. It's trying to give him opportunities to get off the edge. Right. Uh, get that step and in any way get to your yeah. quarterback and. Look, West Virginia is so improved this year. I, I think when I was doing the, the stats, I thought West Virginia might win four games. I told you that at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. After two games, I took that back. I apologized and said <laughs> I was totally wrong. You weren't the only one. This West Virginia team's much improved, and I think your coach is going to stick around. Uh, I, as long as you guys get to a bowl, maybe you get to seven wins, I don't see a reason why you fired Neil. So yeah. I, I think your team is going to stay – it's just going to improve in my opinion. My gut feeling is seven wins is the number because I think our AD will look and see, okay, we got seven wins. Right. Uh, we're going to at least be guaranteed a winning record, even if we lose our bowl game. Right. Right. Uh, if he sees progress in recruiting, which I think he, we have, if he sees better handling of the transfer portal, which I think we have, um, you know, I, I think he'll keep him, but they, but again, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't know what what our what Rimbacker's thinking, so it's hard to predict it. But um, I I think he likes everything else Neil's doing, so he's because of that he's going to have a you know a longer leash, right? Um, so I, you know we'll see. But the fan base is you know the fan base is very very passionate and right. They're going to be loud and vocal if they don't like what's going on, and uh, and well, and, and, and so will I, our donors for that matter. I follow you on Twitter, obviously, and I see your interactions with these fans that are really passionate but seem kind of crazy at times. And BYU has them too. Yeah. They think immediately when something, you know, something in that moment goes bad, yeah. that somebody needs to lose their job, right? Something it, it really drastic has to happen to make a fix. And actually, if you look at things in history, Kyle Whittingham has been at U, uh, Utah 23 years. Um, that continuity. Uh, uh, Lavelle Edwards at BYU for 32 years. That continuity builds schools. And, and you keep your coach around. You keep that same thinking, the way everybody believes that the team's going to be successful. The longer that goes, the more success you're going to have. I mean, look at Oklahoma State, right? Mm-hmm. He's been there forever. And all of a sudden, now they're a juggernaut. So I just think people just need to be patient. And it, it everything... You know, if he wins one game a year, uh, yeah, that might be something you look at. But it, it's not something if you win six or seven games, that's not a reason to fire your yeah. coach. Well, if you, uh, the reason our fans are so uh, disappointed is, you know, this is the worst four-year stretch in our in our history right? since right. since the late 70s. Yes. So before I was even born. Uh, yeah, so, no, I understand. I mean, it's, you know, that's frustrating. We're not, we're not, we're not, look, we're not competing for national titles. Right. We, we've done that a couple of times. but. We're, we're we average about eight wins a year on is, yeah. is our and we haven't even won more than six since he's been here right and and it's just you know it's frustrating and it, look I've, I've i've been frustrated i i look at things i try to look at things from a realistic viewpoint if i try to call a spade a spade if i think that a change needs to be made i'll tell you right but but i also will tell you if i think you're being ridiculous and you know pump the brakes let's see how it plays out and then, yeah. you know, then see right now, I'm right now I'm in week to week mode, man. Two weeks ago, yeah. I wanted him out. Now I'm like, well, let's wait and see how it goes. Uh, you know, we'll see. I don't know. The, the Houston game would have been frustrating if I was a fan. Yeah. And that I didn't would even have really frustrated. <clears throat> it was very game. frustrating. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't want him fired after that one because right. it ended on kind of a fluke. Right. Um, and I, and I, I knew I said the team, I had a gut feeling that whole week that we were going to lose that game. I just had a feeling that we're going to play wow. down because Houston's not a good team. Yeah. And, and I had a feeling that we were going to play down to our competition that week. And we did. And West Virginia does, I, I, most teams do that. Let's, let's be real. Most teams do that at least one or two times a year. Yes. They lose a game they shouldn't lose. Yeah. And I knew that would happen to us at least one time this year. Now, the, then we turn around and lose to Oklahoma State we were all frustrated because we actually went in the fourth quarter with the lead in that game. 
Right. Uh, and after that game was when I thought something's got to change because it looked like we had reverted back to the team we had been the last three years, you know, right. with a lot of boneheaded mistakes, just stupid penalties, you know, beat our, you know, uh, shooting ourselves in the foot, so to speak. Right. But then I see Ollie Gordon turn around and do the same thing he did to us, to somebody else. And I'm like, maybe right. Oklahoma State's legit. Maybe, no. maybe that loss wasn't that bad. You know? Well, and think and think about it. In the uh, they play Oklahoma this weekend. We'll see. You know, mm-hmm. they have a I think a, an even chance to win that game. They're at, yeah. they're in Stillwater. It's the last back not backyard ball. It's the last um, Bedlam. That yeah, Bedlam. Thank you. Uh, and and I think Oklahoma State's coming in hunting. I think they really want to win that game. So, uh, you, you know, BYU lost to a Kansas team that everybody looks at Kansas now and like, holy cow. You know, they're much better than anybody thought. Just like you guys, I think, are much better. I think the Big 12 in general got off to a slow start at the beginning of the year. There's no doubt about it. Some teams that they thought were going to be a little better weren't. uh, Made some silly mistakes losing to teams like uh, South Alabama, which Mm -hmm. is very frustrating for the league. But then they turn around and and they pull off these streaks like Oklahoma State's doing where they're just destroying everybody they play. And it's very, very difficult to gauge how who's going to win from week to week in this league. That's why it's fantastic. Uh, can you, yeah, did you get a chance it. to look at the, the, the schedule uh, ideas that came out today? I did, did not, but I, I did see where they're going to release the scheduling they are tomorrow model tomorrow. tomorrow yeah. uh, but I haven't seen the leaks or, or the ideas that have come out today. Oh, if there's anything from the pod system to be matched with everybody in another part of the conference, BYU and, and West Virginia, I saw in one of them were paired in a, in a pod. So we'll have to see kind of crazy ideas, but yeah. the big 12 is going to be so good next year. I mean, yeah. so good. Utah's back. And, Arizona and, is a monster right uh, now. It, and it doesn't. Yeah. I, I, I think we picked the wrong time to add Arizona, Utah. And uh, well, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know about Utah, but we picked the Maybe. wrong time to add Arizona and Colorado <laughs> to the conference. Well, they're playing good ball. I don't know. We'll have to see next uh, year with if, if Dion comes back. The league is stacked. That's yeah, all I yeah. can say. Yeah, whether you like Dion or not, you, you know he he is turning that program around. He's not going to do it oh, overnight. Yeah. He wasn't going to do it this year, right? Uh, he obviously doesn't have the the offensive line and what he needs in the trenches. But man, his skill position guys are are phenomenal. Uh, they are. I wanted to ask you. I forgot to ask you about your left tackle, and I'm not even going to try to on, on the offensive side. Sua Matea. Yeah, he is he is he. A lot of is he an NFL draft pick? Yeah, he's he, a top ten if he stays healthy. Yeah, we yeah, played against we played against a guy like that a couple weeks ago against Houston, and he pretty much ate our lunch. So he is uh, he is so good on the edge, Coos. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they can get some edge runs with him, right? I'm talking between the tackle and the guard, mm-hmm. anywhere in that range. If you get him moving, like on a counter pull or something like that, he just he he lays people out. It's yeah. It's quite awesome to watch if you respect offensive and defensive line play. Yeah, I would say he. he uh, I'd say he probably never has to get double teamed, does he? Uh, oh, I don't know. You know, I've never paid attention. I imagine he, they probably put three guys on him. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I know this that if he's by himself, he will truck. Who's in? Three yeah, I was going to say that they never have to double team his guy, though. No, never. No. Yeah, so that'll be an interesting matchup. We'll have uh, you know various guys playing against him at various points of the night. Right. Whether it be Sean Martin, Edward Vesterin, and uh, uh, Jalen Thornton, you know different. You know, just naming off a few guys. Uh, maybe Devon Hawkins, but nonetheless. And then our edge rushers are uh, uh, Jared Bartlett and uh, Tyron Bradley. So it'll be interesting to see how they do against him. Um, but. It, if I had to guess, we're going to have to get a lot of our pressures up the middle in this game, and maybe around and around the other edge, obviously. I think the other edge is your biggest weakness. BYU, that's where they end up putting their their, their running back will guard on that side. Mm-hmm. Um, whoever's opposite of Zua Matea has the hardest job on the line because yeah. um, he is so dominant. They will overload that other side, and uh, there was a, a in, the, in the Texas game there was a. A flat blitz from a DB who saw an opportunity. He did it on his own, by the way. Sarkeesian mm-hmm. said that wasn't a play, but he saw that nobody was covering that side because they were doubling the other. So those are things that your team just has to, you know, be better at picking those things up and calling. And then Keaton needs to, you know, check out of those plays if he sees them. Right, right, yeah. All right. Is there any any uh, 
any one player on West Virginia that that you want to ask about or that you're concerned about? The uh, your quarterback is the one that I have the most questions about. I I don't know if he's going to be the guy that will by the end of the season you say this guy led us or if he's just going along with the rest of the offense because I think the rest of the offense is pretty good. I just have questions about your quarterback. Yeah, if uh, if you ask most West Virginia fans, we'll tell you that he's the guy leading the charge on that offense. He's okay because he's doing it with so many. I mean, he he he's he's his passing has never been his strength, right? But he's improved that so much this year. I mean, he's okay. like I said, he's only thrown two picks. Uh, now his completion percentage won't blow you away. He, he's going to hang around 50, 55 percent completion percentage. Now a lot of that is because we've had some drop balls, okay. but he he's not the most accurate passer you'll ever see. Right. But he makes throws when he needs to make throws. He has a great deep ball, one of the best deep balls I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Okay. He's really accurate on the deep throws. And, okay. and he do, and he just does – he does so good. He's done so good at protecting the ball for the most part, and he's so good in the run game. I mean, he okay. he's leading the nation in first down rushes this year. 40, Is that over, right? Or, or, or percentage. Let me, let me back up. Percentage okay. of four, first down rushes. Over 40%. I think it's like 44 45% of his rushes go for a first down. Oh, okay. That's really good. Uh, that is really which, good. Which leads the nation. And it, it did going into the UCF game, and he did 46% in that game. So it, it should have stayed about the same or maybe bumped up slightly. But um, very interesting stat that I heard on uh, on another West Virginia on another West Virginia podcast. But, uh, but that's just how effective he is in the, in the run game. And uh, okay. now that's all assuming he stays healthy. Unfortunately, he takes too many hits at times uh, and comes up hobbling. But uh, – if they can the keep him healthy, they're going to he, – he can lead them to victory pretty much any week. The completion percentage is interesting to me that you say he's about 50% completion percentage because he's really athletic. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of surprises me that's not higher. Yeah, it's – his one of his – he has he has a really, really strong arm. Like he can throw okay. the ball as hard as anybody I've ever seen. Okay. But the problem with him is at times he doesn't know when – he doesn't know – he doesn't know how to put touch on the ball. Like oh. every throw he makes is 100 miles an hour. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. He's a catcher. He's a former catcher in baseball. Probably would have played okay. professional baseball. So he has a rifle for an arm. And everything he throws is like 100 mile an hour. You know what okay. I mean? And at times he doesn't put the proper touch on the ball, that he, on, on the shorter throws. Right. It's okay. funny. The throws he misses the most on are the easy ones, like the screens, the slants. Yeah. Those are the ones he'll miss on. Okay. Typically. But now a, 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 bomb, a, a bomb or a, a post going down the, or a ball going down the seam deep. He'll he'll nail he'll hit those about every time as long as his receiver runs the right route. But well, the short BYU's been stuff, burned. BYU's yeah. been burned a couple times deep. Yeah, they'll they'll, so, they'll th- they're going to take some shots. Uh, okay, I guarantee. That'll, almost be guarantee. Inter- that'll be an interesting chess match then because yeah. BYU hasn't been up against a real, I would say, super deep threat um, mm-hmm. quarterback. I mean, they've given up deep throws, but they've been blows in coverage. Right, they right. haven't been. They haven't been like a hitch and go type yeah, play. Right. So that will be interesting to see if you guys like to stretch the field. Mm-hmm. I, I'm really curious on how BYU does on that. Yeah, me too. And, and now our receivers at times can be inconsistent in their route running. Okay. Uh, which hinders that a little bit. But the last three or but the last three games, they really started improving on that. Okay. And we're starting to see more chemistry between our receivers and, and you know Garrett Garrett missed a couple games with injury. So that right. that that has hurt their that hurt their timing a little bit. Because uh, keep in mind, this is his first year starting, and a majority of our receivers are are either starting for the first time or they're transfers. Okay. So it, it took him some time to build chemistry, and uh, they're finally getting there. So that'll be an interesting matchup to watch: is is our deep threat, our, our deep ball versus your your DBs, and if they can, how well they cover that. I think I'll be probably messaging you through the whole game. I know yeah. you're you're watching the game live, so I'm not expecting yeah. you to give me feedback. Yeah. But I I am going to be testing you, just basically saying, "Wow, that looks really good. How did that yeah. look to you?" Type of stuff. Yeah, it is cool. It's always cool to get the perspective of somebody that when you're at a game, right? Uh, to see what the person on TV because it's a whole different view, man. A lot of it times, the, the TV view you see more actually. Yes. So. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah, there's no. And, doubt. and plus, you guys get replays and stuff that you know you don't see it live. So. Right. Right. Uh, it's always cool to get that feedback, but yeah, that'll be, I'm sure, I'm sure you and I'll message each other back and forth some and absolutely. I, I'm really looking There's forward no to doubt. it, man. This is, I think this is, this has the uh, potential to be a really, I don't want to say a rivalry, but a really exciting game and a really exciting series uh, between these two teams. And uh, 
I would love to play West Virginia on the regular. I know for yeah. you guys, it's a long flight. Uh, it's a di- been a different culture. BYU travels all over, and you guys obviously have been doing it in a conference when we haven't. But I would love to play West Virginia every year. I think BYU and Utah, or sorry, BYU and West Virginia, very similar. Uh, I think the fan bases are similar. I think the way we look at our and represent our schools mm-hmm. is very similar. And so, you know, and now we're picking up four new schools and who knows what happens next year in realignment. But uh, my original hope had been we would play West Virginia every year. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen now, but um, I'm certainly looking forward to this game. Yeah, I was going to say we could call it the Battle of the Mountains, but uh, we're going to have other schools with mountains coming in the conference next year. <laughs> Pretty so. soon, yes. They're, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's going to be, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not sure if they can copyright that one or not. We'll have to work on that, you and I. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, well, listen, Big 12 Mafia, Nathan, I, uh, one more time, plug your stuff and let everybody know where they can find you. Sure. So I'm on uh, Twitter at B12 Mafia, uh, also at The Holy Rivals. Um, those are both my Twitter addresses. And then on YouTube, look me up at Big 12 Mafia or The Holy Rivals. Both are different pages, but we show the same shows. So I really appreciate you giving me some time here. It's been great to see you, Coos. And Absolutely, we'll have man. to touch base next week after the game. Absolutely. And uh, for those of you uh, listening uh, or watching, rather, you see it on the, on the screen. His name uh, at B12 Mafia. Uh, and like, for those of you listening, obviously, uh, pretty easy to find. So go check it out. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to his channel. Uh, you know, go check out his work. Like I said earlier, he has great guests on, great content, really a lot of interesting stuff, especially about conference realignment. Uh, that's not all they talk about, but it's one of the go to shows out there for that content. Uh, well, I appreciate that, Chris. Yeah, Thank you Absolutely. very much. That's a great compliment. No problem, buddy. Listen, uh, thanks again for coming on, man. You and uh, look forward to chatting with you again later in the week. Yeah, we'll definitely be chatting through the week. And then this, on Saturday, I know you're going to be at a live, so I'm not expecting you instant, but maybe between quarters or something, you can uh, re- reply to some of my tweets. Awesome, man. I'll do my All best. Right. All right. We'll talk to you later. You're thank, the thank, best. Thank you, Nathan. You bet. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Coos. Cute Country Roads, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Peace.